So as we get started today this video is divided into chapters. If you wanna skip at any point just look at the sliding bar underneath the plating window and you can see the chapters to skip ahead. Welcome back to the Crochet Crowd as well as my friends over at Yarnspirations.com. I'm your host Mikey. Today we are going to work on the Crochet Shifting Chevrons Tote. So what we have here is a beautiful bag. It's made of Karen Cotton Ripple Cakes. I don't have this particular yarn on hand so I'll be using Karen Cotton Cakes today with a four millimeter and a five millimeter or a size G and H crochet hook in order to obtain the size. So what we have here is that there's a beautiful little texturing that's going on in this and it looks really quite amazing and on page number three you have the base of the bag diagram and also you have how the chevrons are going to be working in here. So what I'm going to do is that I'm gonna get you started on the base of the bag and I'm also gonna take you through the chevron area here. You'll notice that this bag is actually um, increasing and going up on an angle like this because it's actually increasing in size. So it's a nice bucket bag kind of that, that way and then here the handle is done in a rows just for the first few and then is done as a continuous spiral then to the other side. So we're gonna be working through this today and grab your yarn and let's play. Before we begin today we are going to be double stranding some sections of this bag today. That means that you're going to grab not just one strand but you're gonna grab two. So you're just gonna use two different balls in order to do that so that you can have that and pretend that it's one. So in this tutorial you'll be seeing me doing that and then when we just go down to one strand we'll be working through that as well. So let's begin. So let's begin today we are going to use the five millimeter size H crochet hook in order to start this project and what we're going to do then is that we are going to go and pretend that the two strands are one. So just put them together, hold them together as if they're one and I need you to create a slip knot. So to start the very base of the bag I need you to chain 32. So just rolling the hook back so just one, two, three, four, and five and go all the way to 32 and meet me back here in just a moment. Let's go for round number one. Round number one does not require you to obsessively count. So we're just gonna have to count but not in this particular uh, round. So what we're going to do is that we're gonna come down the chain and then we're gonna spin around the back side of it and come around again so it's gonna create a circle. So I need you third or sorry, second chain from the hook so one and two. Go into the back loop of the chain it will look nicer and I need you to put in three single crochets there. So one, two and three. Now I need you to continue down the chain just one uh, single crochet in each and on the very last chain I'll meet you there in just a moment. So and the last chain has th three single crochets so that it will turn. So I'll see you there in just a moment. So I'm coming down the chain and my very last one here I'm going to put in three single crochets and just let the project just turn upside down. So we have one, two and three. So I think I kinda lied to you. What I would like you to do and it's just for cause I would do it myself is just make sure that when you start on the first one coming back all the way to the end make sure there's only 29 stitches. So just start with that one and say one and two and then I will see you at the other side here when we get there. So just continue to count and I'll see you back here in a second. Just come all the way down. I have 29 that's come along and I'm just going to slip stitch it then to the beginning. Now I wanted you to count that because the next few rounds will matter is making sure that you have the right count. So we have 64 single, uh, single crochets all the way around. So we're now going to progress to round number two. So in round number two what's gonna happen here is that we're going to chain up one and we'll put a single crochet, three of them in the first stitch and then what we're going to do is then put one single crochet in the middle one of that turn and then three single crochets in the next one here and then we're gonna zip all the way down and so you can see that there's three single crochets in the corner here on the bottom. So then you put three in the first one, one in the middle and then three in the next and then zoom all the way back. Let's begin row number two. Let's begin row number two and you're going to just chain up one and in the same one you want to apply three single crochets. So one, two and three and then the next one is the middle and then you'll put three single crochets in the next one. So one, two and three. Now you're just gonna zoom all the way down to the other side and I want you to find the very last one 
and here's the instruction. The first one will have three single crochets. The next one which is the middle one will have one single crochet and then the last one of the grouping of three will have three single crochets. Please do that and then meet me back here at the end of the, of the rotation and I'll see you back here in a moment. When you get all the way back around just slip stitch it to the first one of that three and it should be pretty looking really good. And so let's go back to the diagram to go for row number three. So let's start round number three. I've been saying row but it's a round. And so round number three you're gonna chain up one and you're gonna single crochet in the first one. The next one here is the middle one of the grouping of three. So you're going to put three single crochets in that one. And then the next three in a row will be single crochets by themselves. And again the next middle one of the grouping of three is gonna have three single crochets and then you're gonna zip on down. So on the other side when you get there You'll come down and it's the middle one of the group of three. We'll have three single crochets. You'll have three by themselves. Three single crochets again in the middle and then you'll zoom all the way back. Please do this and let's do round number three. So let's do round number three. You're gonna chain up one and you'll put one single crochet in the first one. And then this next one is the middle of the grouping of three. So this will have three single crochets. So one, two and three. And now there should be three single crochets before you get to the middle one here. And so do you see that? So one, two, three. So that means that's right. So you just do that. So one, two and three. And then the next one here is going to be the turn. So it'll be three single crochets. Now you're gonna just continue to go all the way down the other side and then again the middle one of the grouping of three will have three single crochets. There will be three single crochets in a row and then the middle one on this side here will have three single crochets and then your zip on back. So please do this for round number three. So I just come all the way down around and I just slip stitch. Now we're gonna go for round number four. Now round number four is the same thing what we just did. Is so we're gonna just chain up one and then the first two in a row will be single crochets and the middle one of the grouping of three is gonna have three single crochets. So one, two and three. And then you have five in a row before you get to the middle one of the next one. So we have one, two, three, four and five. And do you really need to count it? Not really. If you know how to identify the middle one of, of those groups of three then you don't need to count. So then you'll put three single crochets there. So when you come around the middle one of the grouping of three will always have three single crochets and then everything else is just single crochet in between. So please do this all the way around and I'll see you at the end of this round. This is round number four. So just come around to number four. Looks pretty cool right? So now we're going to and see how this is kind of oblong a little bit. Don't worry about that. It will balance itself out. It's just the way that the stitch uh, stitches go in. So let's uh, begin number five. Number five is the same thing. So the middle one of the grouping of three will have three single crochets and you'll do that for each of the corners. So when you start off you'll chain up one and in this case you'll have one, two and three on its own. But again I wouldn't worry about counting that so much. Just look for the middle one of the grouping of three and you'll always get it. But it's good to know just in case, right? So in this case then there should be seven single crochets before you get to the next one. And again I wouldn't count. I would just look for the middle. So do you hear me counting? Nope. Okay. So now the next one is there. So let me just verify anyway just because I'm a little paranoid now. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. This is the middle one. So there you have three single crochets. So what I need you to do is continue around. Again the three middle uh, the middle of, of the three single crochets will get three single crochets again and then just one single crochet in the rest. And we're gonna conclude with round number five in a moment and this will be the ending of using two strands at the same time so that the base of the bag is thicker. So I'll see you at the end of this round in just a moment. So I'm coming up to the end of number five and at the end of number five what I need to do is that I need to just fat or slip stitch it and then I need to cut one of the yarns. So it's coming from the yarn ball. So choose whatever ball that you would like to release and just cut one of the strands and I need you now to change back or change to the four millimeter size G crochet hook in order to proceed any further. And we're going to proceed now into 
the first row which will then have us expand one more time and then we'll do four rows of just straight single crochets so that we can really see the, the ball or the bowl shape of this bag turn out. Let's start the first row and the base is now thicker and we're going to begin. Make sure that your hook is changed to the four millimeter size G. Chain up one only and in the same one as the join I need you to put in one single crochet and go over top of the straggler that you cut as well and that will hide it. So that's one stitch and you know, you'll do a single crochet for the next and then a single crochet for the next. Then the next one will have two single crochets. So the repeat pattern going all the way around this particular around is that there will be three single crochets by themselves. So we have one, two and three and then the next one has two into the same one so it's having a bit of growth. I need you to do that all the way around. This is the first round of the, of the uh, beyond the bag. So let's begin to continue to do that and I'll see you back here in just a moment. So now that I've just gone all the way around I have the right counts and now I'm going to proceed now two, three, four and five and all that is is that you are just going to chain up one and just do one single crochet in each of the stitches all the way around. So please do these four rows of just one single crochet and then I'll be back and then we're gonna start the actual repeat pattern which is the fun step that you saw within the models uh, that may have compelled you to wanna do this pattern. So please just do th uh, four rows of one single crochet and I'll be right back. Okay, so now I've just finished up to the fifth round off camera. I need you to really listen here. We are going to complete the shifting chevron stitch and it consists of one, two, three and four and we have to do that twice. So we do one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four and then we proceed into the pattern. So you'll see that after you get the four it says repeat rounds one through four once more. So that's one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. You then pick up the pattern right here. It says the next three rounds are one single crochet in each stitch and then the next round after that is chain one, two single crochets in the next stitch and then one single crochet in the next nine stitches and repeat from the asterisks around. So the two single crochets in the next, one single crochet in the next nine. Then you have to do the spiked sorry the shifting chevron uh, pattern again. So work four rounds. So one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four and then you pick it back up again and then you do this. So these next three rounds here that you see they're always different because it's growing bigger. So this one was one single crochet in the next nine and this one's one single crochet in the next ten and this one's the next eleven and then the next twelve. So what I'm going to do is that I'm gonna take you through one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four and then we'll do the four rounds here and then I'm gonna leave the rest of this for you in order to, to get to the top of the bag and it's just a matter of looking at the pattern here and just being able to figure out the number. So it's gonna be ten, eleven and twelve and that's kind of a cool idea. So we're gonna begin to do this now and we're gonna start with the first round and let's take a look at the diagram and see what we're gonna get ourselves into. So we just finished the fifth round of the single crochet that we have and this will look the same as if you were doing the regular rounds as well. So it's gonna be these single crochets that are underneath. So as we begin row number one we are going to or round number one we're gonna chain up one and we'll do one single crochet into the next three. This here this is the double spiked stitch. So you're just going to wrap the hook and you're gonna come into here and then you're gonna come in to here. Okay, so I'm gonna show you how to do that. The nice thing about it is that once you get established there you'll do the next three. This one here that you'll have is just coming one stitch over from where this one is and the next one is coming straight on down. So you just gotta remember that you're just skipping a set number of stitches here down below in order to make it all work. And so once you get established in the first one the rest of it's pretty straightforward to go. As we get bigger in this or taller then what's gonna happen is that the spike will be changing position. So eventually the first one will then be going um, before the um, before the um, slip stitch and then straight on down and we're gonna keep on shifting that over and over in order to get it to do uh, to get it to go. So let's try round number one. Okay, so let's begin. 
row number, uh, round number one. So you're gonna chain up one and you'll do one single crochet in the first three. So one, two, and three. Now the first one of the grouping of three is where you're gonna come and you need to go two rows below right here. So just see a full row, full row. So there's the two. And so you're gonna yarn over and go into that one and pull through, pull up a loop. And then this next one is where, where we are currently and we need to go three rows below. So one, two, and three and just yarning over and go three rows below and pull up a loop. Give it a bit of slack and then you're gonna pull through all of the loops on the hook. And there is your texture there. So that counts as the stitch that it's sitting in front of. So you just single crochet the next three. So we have one, two, three, and then begin again. So just following it around and make sure you get to the right level. And the next one is just straight on down three. So one, two, and three, and come on in. And then pull up the loop and then pull through all five. Okay, and I need you to do that all the way around. So I'll show you one more time. So that counts as the one that's sitting in front of. So we have one, two, three. Okay, and so the third one is where you come on down. You're gonna come on down two and look for the one that's down two just for verification. And then the one that you're in front of right now. One, two, three. So it's gonna take you a little bit of time to get established but it's because it's the first round too it, that it, it will become more obvious in the future rounds. So please continue to do this all the way around. This is round number one. So I'm coming to the very end of this round. Now it did take me a while because I wanna make sure that I'm getting the stitches exactly where I need to position them and uh, that's just the way it is, right? So and it's a new stitch too so you have to get used to it and then once you have that last spike in there then you're just going to slip stitch it to the beginning and we're gonna move on to row number two. So just to take a look, um, I did frog a little bit just to make sure that my spikes were all in the same position and we're gonna move on to row number two next. Let's begin round number two. You're gonna start with just chain one and you're gonna start immediately with a double spike. So you're just gonna wrap the hook and see where this is coming into. See this one leaning? You wanna come into the one just above it. So just kind of follow it just above and then yarning over pulling it through. And then the one that's going straight on down is going to be into this one here. It's gonna be share, share the same one and then you're gonna pull through. And now we're going to single crochet the next three in a row. So I'm just kind of leaning things forward so I can see and what I, what my goal is, is that the spike stitch is just after where the spike is. So the spike stitch will appear here. So you'll have three single crochets in a row. So one, two, and three. So the third one is sitting on top of the old spike. And so you'll do a new, knit another spike. So just wrap. And so you'll come and you see this one here. You're gonna come straight up just one. And pull through. And the next one is this one here coming straight on down into the same one. And pull through everything and then you'll do your three in a row which is the last, the third one is the, the spike. So one, two, three. So now that you have orientation on here it's easier. So just wrap the hook. So you're coming up to the one just above this one. And then the one coming straight on down is sharing the last of this one. And then you'll do your three in a row. Please do this all the way around for round number two. And now so I'm coming up to the end of round number two. I've got my double spike and there should be three single crochets left in a row. So we have one, two, and three and you're going to join to the first double spike there. Now we're gonna move on to round number three next. In round number three I've been able to zip around a lot quicker now because of the fact that is I understand the pattern. So now it's becoming fun. So chain up one and you'll do one single crochet in the first and then therefore you'll begin your spike. 
So you'll begin and you'll start with the one. See this one leaning? You'll start with the next one up that's higher. And then this one here. So the next one then becomes, see this one leaning? That's the one it's gonna share. Okay. See the uh, resemblance? So now you're gonna do the one, two, and three and the third one ends up in the top of the spike and so you'll do another spike from this point. So here and you're gonna come one taller or one higher than the last one and then this one here is sharing the same one that's leaning over which is the last one there. And then you'll have one, two and three. So that's sitting on there. So let's do one more. So it's just one taller so, or just one higher from the last one and then this one shares that tall, that one right here. And I need you to do this all the way around for round number three and I'll see you back here in a moment. So I'm completing round number three as the pattern as I know it and after you get this last spike in there's only two single crochets after it because the first single crochet that's standing by itself is after the, the connection spot, right? So Let's just join it to the first and let's move on to round number four next. So in round number four we're going to chain up one and we'll do one single crochet in the first two stitches and the two see it's on the top of the spike and so then you'll create another spike here and it's a right above and then it's in the same one as the last that you see over here. and then it's three single crochets in a row which will take you to the top of the next spike. Right there. So you're gonna come in and so you're gonna go to the one above and then the same one is here. This is actually a lot thicker than you realize. Chance there if you're crocheting along with me at this moment you're, you're probably surprised by that too. I am for sure. So this is creating a th extra thickness in it. I wasn't sure if it was gonna be that thick or not. So just keep on moving around. So I'm coming to the end of number four and I'm doing a spike stitch and then after, after the end of the spike stitch there's only one single crochet left and then you're just gonna join it. So now we have to begin rows number one through four once again in order to continue the pattern and we're gonna start with row number one again. So we have to do one through four two times. So we're gonna start again and this time when we start row number one we don't have to worry about counting the stitches. We can just continue to follow the pattern. So let's do this. So in row number one so we're gonna chain up one and you'll do one single crochet in the first three which will take you to the top of the spike and then you're just going to come one up higher and then share the same one as before. So it's exactly what you already know so I'm not gonna spend too much time on it at this moment because we've already gone through this. So this is row number one. I'm repeating it for the second time and I want you to do that and please uh, pick up uh, at the end of this round in just a moment. At the end of row number one if you recall there is a spike stitch just after the whole concept and uh, we're just gonna join it. So the spike stitch will be the very last and then you just join it. So you can reverse back now to row number two, three and four already filmed and it will pick it up and where I'm gonna pick you up next is that after you get the fourth row done or fourth round done I'm going to pick you up and we're gonna go through the next rounds just to make sure you get that. So please do rounds number two, three and four. You can rever reverse back the video. Just see the video chapters in order to do that it, to reverse back if you need to and um, this is just gonna continue to go around and around and let's continue our journey in just a moment starting with the next rows in just a moment. I've now completed this section here. So I went one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. So there's a total of eight rows here. Now we're going to move on to the next three rounds as per the pattern. So the next three rounds just continue along, just chain up one and just put in one single crochet into each of the stitches all the way around and then please do all three rounds and meet me back here and then we'll do the increase that is involved. Remember the increase does change as you get higher up in the bag and we'll be talking about that a little bit later. So just one single crochet in each of the stitches all the way around for three rounds and I'll be right back in a moment. At this point we're now going to move on to doing the next round 
chain one, two single crochets in the next single crochet, one single crochet in the next nine single crochets. Once we have that done, we're gonna work eight of the shifting chevrons. So that's one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, and then you're gonna move on. At the time of filming this, and I've already confirmed with the designer, there's an error right here. It says next round. It's next three rounds. And so at the time of filming, it's actually currently there, but it will be corrected in the future so you may not even see this error at all. So in the next three rounds, we're going to then do uh, three rounds of single crochet. Then this time it'll be chain one single crochet into the next or two single crochets in the next and one single crochet in the next ten and then eight more rounds of the shifting or eight more rounds of the shifting chevrons. So what I'm gonna demonstrate here is the nine just to make sure that you understand it and then I'm gonna leave the rest of this here for you to be able to complete. Now you'll notice in the pattern of this particular bag is that there is four sections. So one two, three, and four. So after you have the final eight that are here, there's gonna be five rounds of just single crochet without any expansion at that point. So what I'm gonna do is just demonstrate how to uh, increase it just the one time and then I'm gonna leave the rest of this uh, bag for you. So let's move on to that round. So we're gonna do the increase. So this is the first time it's being done. So we're going to chain one and you'll do two single crochets into the first. And then there's going to be nine in a row of single crochet. So let's count those. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. And then that's the repeat. So then you repeat again. So two single crochets in the next and then nine is on its own. So you're gonna repeat that all the way around and I'll meet you there in a moment and then we'll quickly talk and then you can do the rest of the body of the bag on your own. So I've just done my increase here with this was the nine and uh, single crochets in a row and that with the two that is, is increasing. So now I need you to go back and you're going to do one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four and then three rounds of single crochet and then the next increase. So you'll continue to do that and just look at the pattern in order to get those numbers. So the next time that'll happen is that there will be 10 single crochets in a row and then the next time after that it will happen it will be 11 and then the next time after that is 12. So eventually you'll see four strips of this and then the last three or sorry the last five rounds are going to just be single crochets and the, that will conclude. So that's where I'll see you here in a few moments from now but in, in the meantime I'm gonna put my hook in the wind and I'll get there so that I can move on in today's tutorial. Okay I'll see you back here in just a few seconds from now but I have a few hours worth of work to do at this point. So last time I left you I was way down here and I spent my weekend and I got it bigger. It's not 100% perfect but it's perfect enough for me and that's great. So I literally put a stitch marker here so I was kind of losing where I was uh, when I was coming back around. Uh, sometimes it's just easier to put a stitch marker so I will take that out. So now that I'm at the top I want to just fasten in the end and I want to show you how I'm gonna do that because that actually can make a nicer finish. So you can see that I have left in the loop here. So my crochet hook would have been in there. So what I want to do is that I want to pull that loop. So you notice that I did not join it. So this is not in the instructions. This is something of experience just to show you. So what I want to do is that I want to create that join. Sorry I ran in the studio. Me running I know it's a funny thing on, on its own. <laughs> so what I want to do is that I want to take this and I want to go across as if I'm going into the stitch. Okay. And I want to bring it back and I want to pull so it pulls nice and tight. This one comes out of the top of this one here and I want to go back down in there and I'm just going to pull that. And so it'll keep a nice flat look because if you do it with a regular uh, join you always get a, a bump. So now on the back side here I want to just drag my yarn through about an inch or so. This hook here or this particular needle here has a point on it so it struggles to get through the fibers a little bit. So if you see me struggling it's a real deal. So I'm just gonna turn it the other way because it's easier for me. So I'm just gonna pull and I'm staying on the inside and so a slightly different path going back in the opposite direction. Okay this way and then one more time going in the opposite direction. In a slightly different path again. If you go in the exact same path it will just fo follow it. Okay so now that that's in I want to take care of any loose ends that I do have on here. 
and this one here because of the way I did it you can go right down into the project. So I have that other loose ends to take care of and so what I'm gonna do is that we're gonna move on to the handles. So we're now gonna move on to the handles and there's two of them I've already done them in advance and so what it is is that we're gonna have it and it'll be just going across in the rows like this and then we'll be going in a complete spiral. So it's no, there's no joining at all you just keep on going to spiral about 25 inches and then the other side once you get about 25 inches you just go back and forth on there. Once you have that done then you can just sew it down to whatever position you would like to do at the flat end and therefore you'll have a thicker piece of uh, grabbing onto your bag. So without further ado let's go on to the handles next. So let's begin to do the bag. We're gonna be using a five millimeter size H crochet hook today. We are double stranding the Karen cotton cakes. So the double stranding will make it stronger and we're going to create a long tail so that you can use that tail to sew it to the bag later. So create a slip knot. Just put the two yarns together. It's from the same ball for me. So I'm using the interior um, strand and the exterior strand from the same ball. Once your slip knot is on you're going to chain eight. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. Let's do row number one. Second chain from the hook. So just count back one and two. Turn it over and get the back hump of the chain. It will just look nicer and I need you to single crochet across your chain. So by doing the second chain from the hook you will end up with seven single crochets all together. So seven is the operative number in case you have to count stitches later. So row one is done. So what I need you to do is that we need to do a rows, turn it around first and do rows number two 3, 4 and 5 the exact same way. So just chain up 1 and do 1 single crochet in each of the stitches going across and then turn it. So please do now rows number 2, 3, 4 and 5 the same way just back and forth with single crochets and I'll be right back in just a moment. I'm now coming up to the end of row number 5. So at the end of the row I don't want you to turn the work. Okay so you should be able to count 5 rows. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So now we're going to just flip up the other side. So just come, coming around and now you're gonna go in a continuous spiral. So starting in the very first stitch you're just going to single crochet and this will pull that into a circle. So all you have to do now is just go in a continuous spiral for however long you want it. For the bag that I have which is a generous size handle but it's not overly huge is 25 inches between the top of this section here all the way before you start doing the opening on the other side. So you're just gonna put your hook into the wind and just go in a conti uh, continuous spiral. For myself what I decided to do is just once in a while just to make sure that I can count that there's still seven stitches when I'm doing a circle. And so if the thickness of the, the concept changes then you know it's a problem. So just immediately jump on over. So once I jump over the first time I wanna count the number of stitches just to verify that there's still seven. So one, two, three, four, five, six and you can see that I'm missing a stitch. So that means I jumped too far when I jumped. Okay so I wanna jump back one. I'm gonna leave this in the tutorial because it's it's better for me to leave in a mistake like that than it is to pretend that I'm perfect. So I'm just gonna count again. Make sure that I have seven. So one, two, three, four, five, six and seven. So all I have to do now is just do in a continuous spiral. Just check the seven once in a while just to make sure that you're okay and just um, get to the inches that you want. So this particular one I have to keep spiraling around until I can get 25 inches non-stretched just relax laying the tape measure down laying this down and measuring it. So please uh, come back here in just a few moments uh, for me uh, in, in just a few moments and just to um, recap because we have to open up on the other side. So we'll begin to do that. So next. you're gonna continue to spiral around until you get to the uh, distance that you want. So from the edge that I started to the opening here is 25 inches and then I just finished the final five rows. So what we're going to do then is that once you're ready to do that and let's just say we're ready to do that. So just say I have my 25 inches between the here and here. So in order to open it back up then you just turn it around chain one and you will single crochet across the seven. So one and count them make sure two, three, four, five, six 
and seven. Now to answer your question, these ha opening happens to be at the same spot. If it's not, you can just uh, simply just twist the handle because it's so long you can twist it a little bit um, in order to get it and it shouldn't uh, really misshape anything. So once you have your seven there, that's considered row one of five. So then you turn your work, chain up one and just do single crochet is going back. So you need to do five rows of this. So we've already done one, this is two and then do three, four and five and meet me back here in just a moment. So I'm bringing back the main sample. So once you have your five rows done and it's completely just leave a long tail because you can use that to sew it down to the project. So we have long tails on both sides and what we want to do is position this in the bag so that it makes sense. So what I want to do is that I wanna lay it down onto the bag and determine where I would like to place it and that's what we're gonna do now. So let's position the handle. So you wanna just make sure the bag is laying flat because of the way that it's shaped on the bottom. You will see that. And so what I like to do is that you use the pitcher. It doesn't give you a dimension but use a pitcher to determine where to put the handle. So what I like to do is put my hand out and this is gonna be the start. So I'm going to put one right here and I wanna lay it so that the flat area opens completely up and will be on top of this idea. Once I have that established, I want to just grab another little crochet hook and we're just gonna use spare yarn. So I wanna do four pieces and just carefully going in. I just wanna mark it where I'm gonna put it. And that'll hold it in that position until I'm ready to sew it in. Okay, so my hands are pretty about equal on both sides I believe. So this side I wanna turn it so that this is facing down. So I wanna make sure this handles, if I have, am twisting it, it's not gonna be weird shaped. So just make sure that it will have the beautiful arch and using my hand just to the edge. That's right about there somewhere. And I wanna do the same with the other side. But once you have the one side done, just turn it over and do the other side. And so just starting with the two strands, use them together and you're gonna wanna use a needle. So I just switched out my needle to something that I know will work better than that really sharp one. And so my goal is, is to go across the bottom. So just kinda going in and out using the same color and I just wanna kinda start it and going in and out. And I'll give you a little secret here in a moment and then coming back it. So just kind of matching it up and I wanna have, make sure that it comes down straight as well. Like down the, the angle there. So my goal here is to go all the way across, up and then back across and back down so I do a complete circle and then I'm going to go in an X formation up and then down and then an X formation going the other way. And the reason why I'm doing that is that it's gonna be more stable and it will be a lot stronger. So once you get enough of this sewn into position, you can move those, you can take off that stitch marker and just don't be cheap about attaching this. Mean, meanwhile, don't, uh, make sure you put in the work because all the weight will be resting on these, on these handles. So once you get to the other side, just start going up. And make your way all the way to the top edge. I can feel it in behind. And then I'm gonna go back across. So I'm gonna go across and then down and do my angles. So I'll be back in just a moment. So I've gone all the way around and I went up and then I came down and then I went up. So at the end here I'm just going to turn it over and just weave in my ends. So I'm going to do it so that I'm gonna tie this to a knot first. So staying on the inside. Pull nice and tight. And then I wanna drag this yarn underneath three times. So just going across once, just stay right behind the handle or in front of the handle I should say. 
and then go back across again. And then finally the third time is the charm. So going back and forth three times this should never fall out on you. And then you can safely cut it down into the project. And therefore your handle then would be attached. So I need you to do that with all the handles and I'll be right back in just a moment. So I've now sewn in everything and um, this is one of the nicest bags that I've seen on yarnspirations.com. I really loved it. It's designed by Julia. Um, I like the texture a lot. Like a lot. It's not for the weak minded. The people that just want like simple uh, stitches. Um, but the this looks like feathers to me and it looks amazing. And I said as I mentioned I did screw up a little bit before. But uh, I'm really okay with this. And now look who's back from the big city. <laughs> That's a sex in the city quote. So um, I love this bag. This has been a lot of fun. And uh, Wendy's the one that got me hooked on this uh, particular pattern. And she knows that I'm a sucker for texture. So I was like, like darn Wendy. Wendy. <laughs> we have to have a talk girl. Don't show me these fabulous patterns because you know I'm going to want to hook it. So that's it for today. We hope you've had a good one and until next time it's Mikey on behalf of the Crusher Crowd and yourinspirations.com. See ya. Bye bye. <laughs>